Well, I'm, I'm also glad to be able to talk some in front of this uh, very nice audience. Um, and I hope to hear, have some nice um, discussions with you afterwards and also in the workshops. Um, I will talk about um, a project uh, that has been mentioned several times and it's, um, uh, it's called um, uh, Interpretation for Children and Young People in the Nordic Countries. And I will talk about it as a Nordic project. Um, I will also talk about the seven central perspectives uh, of nature interpretation for children and young people that have been brought up in this project. Um, and also um, talk about it as a base for future discussions um, on this, this area. Um, as um, has been mentioned, um, there, have, there have been cooperation for a long time in the Nordic countries uh, when it comes to nature interpretation. And when I talk about the Nordic countries here, uh, I mean Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, Iceland, and also the Faroe Islands um, that somehow belongs, is a part of Denmark in some way also. <laughs> Somebody, yeah. But it's also a, a country of its own, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was a d diplomatic thing I went into there. I don't know, it's quite sure. It's like a Greenland somehow. Um, well, um, that, uh, uh, Eva showed the, the Nordic uh, definition that was brought up uh, in the 1990 um, uh, in a report from the Nordic Council. She, she showed that definition before of uh, nature interpretation, and that has been uh, translated into the, Nord the Scandinavian languages, uh, I suppose fi Finnish as well. Um, and used uh, from, from 1990. Um, and then, um, um, and then um, um, like four years ago, we, we started to, um, to renew this, um, um, uh, th this work um, in this uh, cooperation group uh, that Eva also mentioned. Um, and um, in the group, there are central actors in the Nordic countries uh, with national overview uh, and or responsibility um, over nature interpretation in the countries. So it's, it's not a cooperation group for all the nature interpreters, but more people working central, in a central position in the countries. And uh, in the group we have had the discussions um, on how to um, strengthen the cooperation um, but also um, on uh, how to work with ideas and, and developing projects uh, to, to develop the, the nature interpretation further. Um, and in, in those discussions we've talked a lot about best practice, best practice for in different areas, but we, we focused on, the, on, the, um, on children and, and young people. And we had some applications sent in for the Nordic Council, and at the, I think at the third time we, 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 we got the application um, um, uh, yeah, it, it uh, succeeded. <coughs> so this project, um, it was a one-year project um, with all the Nordic countries participating. And um, the goal was to collect, develop and also mediate um, uh, good examples on um, <coughs> nature interpretation for children and young people. Um, and uh, an interesting focus here was that it was not only about nature interpretation as a whole, but it was um, how it can uh, help children and young people to, to increase their democratic uh, participatory um, um, strength. Um, so how, how they could make a feel, how interpretation can be used for children and young people so that they feel that they can t take a part in the change of society and change in nature conservation and, and sustainable, sustainable development. Um, and uh, some focus says uh, more geographically that we had in project was uh, peri-urban areas, it was um, uh, uh, protected areas and uh, culture environments. Within the, um, uh, within the uh, project, we had a workshop in Östersund that is in the center of Sweden. <laughs> Some people wouldn't agree, but uh, geographically it is, more or less. Um, it's, it's north of here, yeah. Um, it was last year, and uh, we, had, uh, we selected two to three, um, no, three to five nature interpreters from each country um, 
that, that had to apply to get there. And uh, we selected them uh, out of their, the examples they work with. How do they work with nature interpretation with children and young people? And we invited them and we had a, a, a workshop for some days. And uh, we also had two experts um, um, in uh, didactics and, and uh, pedagogic. And they were from um, uh, natural science area and, and pedagogics. And uh, the experts were um, Søren Breiting from Aarhus University in Denmark and uh, Lili Ann Wolf from Åbo uh, University your Obu Academy University in Finland. Bless you. So what was the result from all these meetings and discussions then? Well, we came up with these seven central perspectives. And they were uh, a, a result both of um, a discussion the, with the, the discussions from um, these uh, 25 uh, interpreters meeting. Uh, at the workshop, but also uh, discussions with the experts and the, the, the people working with the project itself, the steering group. And we think that these areas are um, crucial for working with the quality when it comes to nature interpretation. And um, we think that they can increase um, the understanding of uh, nature and sustainable development uh, when it comes to nature interpretation. We think that these seven areas are quite important. So now I will go through the seven uh, central perspectives. The first one is uh, that one can see nature interpreters as facilitators. Not only guide uh, or interpreter, but as facilitators. And as facilitators, the interpreter uh, should um, try to establish a motivational framework and uh, a method of learning. Uh, and, and then it's important that the interpreter is aware of his, uh, his role, his knowledge, and um, uh, his views. And he should, um, um, he should facilitate views of the participants, views, opinions, discussions, with an aim to encourage participants to reflect. Reflection is important here. Um, and this involves uh, participant-oriented work methods um, that organizes and establishes frames for learning processes and that clarifies views and stimulates, stimulates openness for an understanding of the views of others. So it's not only about the, the participant itself, but it's also to understand that others maybe think otherwise. Um, it's an important part of democratic um, issues. <clears throat> but we also need to know more on how the interpreters should uh, facilitate to inspire participants to engage themselves in questions on nature and the environment and how to let their voices be heard. So that was about the facilitator role. Then it's about the immediate experience. Uh, when, you, when you work as a guide, and, uh, in, when you're interpreting in a, with personal interpretation, some, for example with teaching or guiding, um, you have a unique uh, possibility to, to use the immediate experience. Uh, it's not about reading a sign, reading a book, that kind of interpretation. It's about uh, you meet, uh, the participant meet the, the interpreter. There you have a good opportunity to, to use that. Um, and, but it's also that um, you, um, you have the experience of meeting what is happening out there. You are at a certain place. You are at a... Um, you, you have to. You can use this uh, this place and the, what's happening and the meeting with all the people. And of course, this experience is very much dependent on what kind of interpretation you do. If you use storytelling, if you dress up in costumes, or if uh, yeah, well, what kind of interpretation you use. And then the then the um, participant has its, its own impression of what's happening. And then we, we did the communication, the discussions in the group, where the interpreter is a facilitator. Um, you can help the participant to, to, um, to make a more um, uh, reflected experience from the event. So that's, that's, uh, that can be the interpreter's role. As I said, reflection is important. And it's vital to, uh, to retain experiences and in impressions. Um, but it also should be uh, seen uh, in relation to what, what the participant have already, what kind of knowledge the person has, and uh, what, uh, what experiences the participant has. 
um, and the interpreter can lead these reflections towards more long-term thinking. Uh, and those, of course, is, that's very important when it comes to sustainable development, that you think more long-term. Uh, but we would like to know more about how the interpreter can get the participants to think um, of the, the experience from interpretation as something linked to their own and to others' future. How, how, how can you use the interpretation to, to, to get the participant to think more long-term long thinking? <coughs> if, you, if you get the participant to, to get involved in, um, for example, a nature conservation project that the, the interpretation is about, or about maybe the, the, the interpretation itself, well, uh, you can get, let them to participate in, the, in how to, to um, design the interpretation. Um, then, then they can feel a more ownership, of, of course, about the, this, um, the nature conservation project or the interpretation. And, and um, ownership is important when, when you want to, um, people to feel that they have a democratic say. Um, so uh, that's, that's important. And um, then uh, interpreters need also to understand their role as facilitators uh, and the importance of creating reflections that can lead just to ownership. Of course, comfort and security is important, not to be forgotten, like Maslow's, uh, you know, the steps of Maslow. Uh, you have to think about uh, safety and comfort in the, in the, in the interpretation. And um, then it's both about uh, the, um, the individuals, um, security and comfort, but also the groups as a whole. And um, how can, uh, uh, important question there is, how can the interpreter um, use the um, uh, interpretation to, to get a more group, a group feeling that maybe together can, can have, a, have a say or have a feel that they can, they can uh, change things in, in the world later on. And there are many, of course, there are many, as you know, there are many activities that you can use to, to make a more group feeling. Um, and then, uh, you, as I mentioned before, there is, um, <coughs> you can always use the place uh, to have this um, uh, ref um, uh, the expression, um, experience from, from a certain place. And um, we can call that uh, location-based lo location learning. Uh, where uh, one can use the, the history of the place, the, the um, culture, the stories, the events of the place, to, to, um, uh, can use it as an opportunity for participants to get special knowledge of and feeling of just that place. <coughs> and a relationship and interest to a place can help children and young people to um, uh, get more in interest in engaging with nature and, and environmental questions. And the seventh central perspective is about preparation and follow-up. And um, the, the interpretation or, or teaching, it's important that it's, that it's a part of, uh, um, that it's a part of the, the participant's daily learning cycle, daily everyday life, so, so that it's adjusted, so it's easier um, attached to, to their thinking, so they can themselves make, uh, make uh, a, a meaning for themselves. And, that it, uh, yeah, it's easier for them to, to pick it up. Um, um, yeah, uh, and then the interpreter can also have a role uh, to teach the, uh, to help the teacher, uh, so that uh, the teaching fits into the education, uh, both before the 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 event, the interpretation, and during and also after to follow up. Uh, how, how, can, how can the interpreter help uh, the teachers in their work? And the result from uh, this project has been um, made in this report, um, and it can be found at our website. And uh, you're most welcome to read them and uh, think, do you agree with this? Do you agree with these seven perspectives? Do you think they are, you would have chosen other ones? Um, and they shouldn't be seen as a, a truth. We don't think this is these seven 
central perspectives, we of course think they are quite important, but uh, we are aware that there might be other opinions. And maybe in other parts of the world, maybe there are other seven perspectives more guilty. Um, so we open up for a discussion and we, we want you to see this as a, a base for future discussions. So I would say that uh, this uh, project uh, has been a uh, um, start for um, a successful Nordic cooperation uh, and a dialogue on best practice for nature interpretation. And uh, it can be seen as a continuation of, of the, the Nordic cooperation that has been taking place from the 1980s and onwards. Um, and there are now seven central perspectives um, that can contribute to discussions on understanding of nature and sustainable development. That is good. And as you notice, they focus on ownership and participation. We think that is important. You're most welcome to use the experiences from the project. And we, um, we welcome comments and, and um, discussions based on them.